The first thing I want to do is plot my holes for the net pots onto the system. Uh, this system in particular is going to have six holes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut those out right now with my three inch hole saw. Alright, so we now have all of our holes cut. Alright, so the next thing I want to do is I want to lay out my pattern that I'm going to be using. So I'll just grab all of my fittings. Got some uh, T joints and some 90 degrees. And I just want to lay out where I want to have everything sort of sit. So the 90 degrees are going to be on the edges. All right. The T joints. All right. So what I've laid out here is sort of my pattern. Now the uh, the 90 degrees is going to create sort of the uh, rectangle around the edge with the pipe. The T-joints in the middle are going to connect up to create a centerpiece. And then this middle T-joint is actually going to point downwards and that's going to connect to the reservoir pump in the bottom. And then I'm going to use these T-joints on either side to create the legs. So the next thing I want to do is cut the pipe to length. So for this I'm going to use this pipe cutting tool that you can pick up at uh, any Home Depot or whatever. Uh, it costs about 10 bucks. And I'm going to use the length of pipe. So what I want to do is measure out the length of pipe that I'm going to need for each of the fittings. Okay, so I've just about finished cutting up all my pieces, but what I want to do before I move along is I want to dry fit everything and make sure it fits. So all you have to do is just place all the pieces together just like so. and we're going to go ahead and mark up our final piece. Okay, so we'll get it ready to mark our final piece. What you want to make sure you do when you're doing your marking is you want to have about a half a centimeter inside to about half a centimeter on the inside here as well. So we'll just go ahead and mark that there. So, and then I'll show you how the clamp works. You just basically pull the clamp apart to reveal the blade, and then find your mark, and then you want to place the blade right onto the mark by just compressing it. And once it's got a grip, then all you got to do is just kind of use it like scissors, right? So we can get this last piece in. It's gonna it's gonna take a little bit of wiggle. Out. Always on the last pieces, it's a little harder. So you can see we have our last bit of fitting in. Now you can see one of the things I've done is that I've made it slightly smaller than the actual lid of the container. The reason for this is most buckets actually get smaller on the inside. So you want to make sure that it's going to go in and out easily, yet that it's still going to provide coverage to all of your net pots.
Now what I've bought is these micro spray heads. They give a 360 degree spray. And what we're going to do right now is mark out along the pipe where we want to drill the holes for the spray heads. So if we look at where our holes are for the net pots, we want to make sure that we have equal coverage kind of everywhere. So having one that's right on top of the net pot might not necessarily be good because as the roots grow down, they're going to grow down and cover these. So you want to make sure that they're sort of offset. All right. The other thing that you can do as well is you can have different angles to have different coverage. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to put my marks with a sharpie wherever we think we want to have a spray head. So I want one to have coverage in between these two holes. So I'll put a mark there. I want to have coverage in between these two holes. So we'll put a mark there. Here we're going to have coverage in between these two holes. Then we're also going to have coverage in between these two holes on this side and between these two holes on this side. We're going to want to make sure we have coverage here. Okay. And going along here, we're going to have coverage here. Coverage here. And then we want to make sure that we do have some coverage on the edges. So we're going to put one here here, here, and there. And that should give us a fairly even coverage. What we're looking to do is just blanket the plants completely. Um, you could add a few extras if you want, uh, but like I say, basically what we're looking to do is make sure that they're not directly underneath the root system, otherwise the roots are just going to clog up and uh, make these unusable anyway. So you want to try to keep them away from the root system, but still with very good coverage. In fact, I do think that we'd even have better coverage if I did add an additional one here, and an additional one here as well. And this would provide a 360 to sort of all four pots. So we're going to get a lot of coverage with this, so let's go ahead and drill out these holes. Alright, now I know that the threading on these micro hoses are 532s, so I'm going to use my drill bit that matches that, and what I'm going to do is drill out each one of these holes, but I want to be a little bit slow at it and make sure I only go through the first layer. I leave the system put together just to kind of provide me some support. And you want to make sure that you get somewhat dead on. You don't want to be too cockeyed, right? So you just go through. And that's the last hole. The next thing I want to do is I have a tap. This is going to put the threading on that's the same thread as what's on this bit here. Okay? So, um, and that's going to create a 1032 tapped hole. And what I like to do for this is I like to turn my drill to its lowest setting. You can see how it's quite a bit slower. And we're going to maybe gently tap the hole. And then reverse out. Now you can see we have a nice thread. like that. So I'll go ahead and finish the rest of them.
Alright, so now that I have all my holes tapped, what I want to do is address the legs. So what we want to make sure is that when this sits inside the bucket, that the spray heads are going to evenly spray just slightly below the bottoms of each of the net pots. So in order to do this, I'll just take a net pot and kind of place it just slightly below the edge of our container. This matches the top of the bucket. And then I'm going to measure up from the bottom. And I can see from this that the net pot bottom here is just at 9 inches from the top. So I want to keep this again slightly below that 9 inch mark. To accomplish that I also want to take into account how much pipe will be back into this position. Okay? So that's about a centimeter and a half-ish. Right, so if we add that to our nine inch mark, so it's about eight and a half inches. So basically if I place this at eight and a half inches inside the bucket, we're going to end up just at that, just slightly below that nine inch mark. So now what we want to do is cut some eight and a half inch long pieces. So what I'll do is I'll measure out eight and a half inches, place my mark, and start cutting. We're going to need four for this. And we got our four legs. Alright, so we have our four legs, and what I want to do at this point is dry fit those legs. So we'll flip the unit over, and we're just going to turn each of our T joints, and we can go ahead and place our legs. Just like that. Now the one thing you want to keep in mind is this entire system is going to have water pressure running throughout. So unless we cap off the legs, then we'll actually have water shooting out of it and just become like a rocket and take off. So just get your simple end caps and we'll go ahead and cap off the legs. Alright, now that the legs are all capped off, we can take the unit. and fit it into our pail. Make sure everything fits good. See that we got a nice, strong, sturdy support. So we can go ahead and get ready to actually start cementing these Basically, in. Basically what you want to do is just coat the edge with the solvent. And then twist it into your fitting. And then any drips you can just clean up. I usually suggest that you start with your easiest fittings first and then just move on to the hardest fittings next. So the thing I want to do now is fit this intake valve onto the bottom there do that much in the same way. We'll just get a little of our cement. And place it on like so. And just press until firm. And now we'll be able to attach 
a hose to the bottom here. At this point, you want to just let everything dry up. It doesn't take long to set, but I usually like to give it a good 24 hours to dry. And now you can see that we have all the spray heads put into place. So all we have to do right now is just go ahead and let this dry, and then we can work on the rest of it probably tomorrow. Um, one thing that you can do in the meantime, though, is you'll notice that I've started right now to um, sort of color this in with a Sharpie and black. Um, I think it's a really good idea just to help keep the light out. If you have the ability to go outside and uh, just spray paint the lid black, I would definitely suggest it. Um, but if you get a big enough Sharpie, you can see that it's not going to take you all that long to uh, to get this painted black on the lid. So um, for me, I'm just going to go ahead and use a Sharpie to uh, get the top black. And uh, you can go ahead and uh, do whatever you want. All right, we're back on day two, and everything is nicely dried. As you can see, I have all my emitters plugged in. And now we're ready to deal with the actual... Uh, feed system for the pump. So in order to do that, much like my last project I did, we're going to want to make a notch in the bucket for our uh, cable. And now we can have the cable just right inside flush with the top of the bucket. So that takes care of our cable. So I bought one of these half-inch adapters, and uh, they just screw right into the uh, to the top, just like so. And then I also have this half-inch flexible tubing. So what happens is it just is a press fit right onto the system there, and then we'll just go ahead and cut it to the length that we need to press fit it onto that side there. So, put it in the system. I'll go ahead and mark it right here. Get our cutting tool. And as you can see, we just press fit it in to the system like so. So now we have a good seal for the pump. All right, so let's place it into our system. And that looks about good there. And basically what we want to do now is find our water level. So this will be the, uh, the amount of nutrient that we need. And the idea here is we don't need the nutrient to come up very far. What we do have to be aware of is if you look at the side of the pump here, you can see that there's an, uh, an intake. And this is where the water is going to come in through and go up to the top of the pump. We want to make sure that the water doesn't drop below this level, otherwise you have the potential of burning out your uh, motor on the pump. So when we set our water level for the bucket, we're going to want to make sure that we have it probably to about this level here. So just twice the amount of water that is needed to cover this. That way when the spray heads spray up, we'd be able to drop the levels to a certain point all right, so as you can see, I have my fill line here. This is at 25 liters. Um, if I was using this as deep water culture, I would have to fill it up to 44 liters to be able to get the same results. So ultimately, uh, quite a bit of savings there. So now that we have our system pretty much ready to go, um, one thing I do want to note is the fact that we do have a contained system, meaning that 
the reservoir and the spray emitters are all in the same bucket. That means that as the roots get longer and start growing down past the spray emitters, they're going to start sitting in this water and it's going to act like a deep water culture system. So in order to prevent the roots from getting rot in that area, we're going to still go with the same technique that we used in my previous model of the deep water culture. And that's using one of these air stones inside there to make sure that we keep enough oxygen. So I'm just going to be using one of these uh, 12 inch air stones and that will go right down inside of the system. And what I've done is just simply drill the hole at the top so that we can feed the air tube inside. All right, and basically the other thing I've done is made sure that all my cables are sort of in the same corner, so if I want to push that off to the side, then I know that everything's kind of coming out of the same spot. But that being said, let's go ahead and uh, see this baby work. Now for the moment of truth. Kind of sprays everywhere without the lid on, but as you can see, we have a working system.